Okay, we're talking about the Kennedy uh, non-announcement announcement, which is unofficially he is running uh, as an independent. He's leaving the Democratic Party and he's going to run independent. What that means exactly, we are not sure. We don't know if that means a truly independent run. We don't know if that means he's joining libertarians. We don't know what that means. Uh, but uh, something that el- uh, other uh, I've seen a lot of conversations about is people wondering if he will be made Trump's vice president. Uh, and I think that that's also very interesting because he has said he would never do that. However, he also said he would never leave the Democratic Party. So <laughs> maybe he will. I don't know. I don't I don't know that I can see him doing that. Uh, I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you think that that's even a possibility? Because I feel like he is so he's been so publicly um, not really harsh uh, or really like uh, tough on Trump. But he has said some things that I think would make that relationship incredibly difficult. Yeah, I, I don't think that is going to happen. And, um, I, you know, what I saw his video teasing out the announcement, uh, that he's going to make in Philadelphia on October 9th. And one of the things he really emphasizes in that video is that, um, he doesn't feel that the American people are as polarized as political media would have us think we are. And I think he really I mean, I think he is sincere in his desire for people to get along better and for people to see the best in each other. Um, I do think he is sincere in that. And I think that is going to be a major thematic thrust of his campaign. And obviously, there's not really a way to run on that as Trump's vice president, (laughs) because Trump is really not about that at all. (laughs) So so I think stylistically, uh, they are uh, a too much of a mismatch for him to, to, you know, play second fiddle to to Trump. Yeah, I can't see him really uh, uh, playing second fiddle to anybody, really, frankly, I think that he's more of a top of the ticket kind of a guy anyways. And he has, as I said, he's not really been super duper hard on Trump. I think he's been trying to, uh, and I, I saw, I don't remember who, which interview it was, but I think he, he was asked, uh, to, to bash Biden and he's got, kind of done the same thing where he's like, listen, I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm not here to bash the left. I'm not here to bash the right. Uh, we need to bring people together or whatever, which, I mean, we've heard all this stuff before from other people. It's hard for me to take any of them seriously but he has said uh quote, yeah. there's a lot of po- he said quote there's a lot of politicians throughout our history that have talked about the border issue as a way to stir up or incite xenophobia or raise nationalism i might come to this issue from a different perspective and it's a perspective of compassion of humanitarianism but also just common sense a country cannot exist if it cannot secure its border he was talking about uh donald trump there he's uh, said yep. some things about you know his xenophobia on the border issue and all of that stuff um and yeah i mean i think he's been very careful in choosing his words which to his I think that's to his credit. I think Cornell West has made unbelievable political miscalculations in the way that he has spoken about Trump, because when you speak about Trump, because his base is so loyal, as you said, you are speaking about them. Uh, and he uh, he does not he's not very good at that. He's not very good at being, um, you know, he calls everybody brother, Bi- brother Biden. I mean, Joe Biden's a horrible human being uh, and is every bit as fascist and uh, disgusting as Donald Trump is. Uh, and then you can't I don't know. It's just I think Cornell West has gone about that in, a, in, a, in the absolute incorrect way. And I think Kennedy has done a, at least a, a pretty good job of walking that line and m- making the criticisms when it's necessary, but not going going too far. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, you're 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 absolutely right. And you're hitting on a massively important point, which is yeah. that RFK is encouraging people to kind of step outside of their comfort zones and explore ideas that they may have previously been cooler to. Whereas Cornell and you saw this on full display in the Jimmy Dore interview Cornell seems ultimately kind of uninterested in doing that. And it was really surprising to me to see him take that tack and really hurtful because I've admired Cornell West my entire adult life. And part of what I always admired about him was his embrace of people and his um, his reluctance to judge people, his reluctance to otherize people for what Mm -hmm. they think or what attitudes they have. I always knew him to be that guy. And in the Jimmy Dore interview, he seemed so disinterested in reaching out to people who weren't already with the progressive program. And Mm -hmm. not only is that disappointing to me just on a spiritual level, but on a political level, it's just 
it's rookie garbage. Um, and it's, it's loser. Class, <laughs> it's Green Party loser garbage. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, RFK seems interested in broadening his coalition, whereas Corn OS, uh, unfortunately, seems more interested in shrinking it. Um, one yeah. of Glenn Greenwald's best tweets, and I'm sort of paraphrasing this, and he because this was a couple years ago. He said the left seems to be the only political uh, faction that seeks to make itself smaller, right? They seek to cull the herd. And um, we saw that pathology on display in the Cornell uh, Jimmy Dore interview. And um, it it really hurts. It it, it really does. Because like I said, I've been an admirer of, of him far longer than I've even known about RFK. And I can't even really call myself an admirer of RFK. Um, But he has maybe it's that Kennedy blood. He has a political instinct um, that Cornell clearly does not. I mean, look, don't forget a lot of today's Republicans used to be Kennedy Democrats, right? Like a lot of the older boomer Republicans, they were Kennedy Democrats back in the day. Uh So right there, that gives RFK a certain crossover appeal um, that is unique to him. And yeah, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right that uh, he seems to be much more, intense on broadening his coalition and much more strategic in his approach to to doing so. There's no question yeah, about it. For sure. And the Cornell West thing also really pains me as well because I when he first announced, obviously again, I don't I don't care. He's running for office whatever. I, I my hope for the Cornell West campaign was that he would use it as an opportunity to bring people together, to kind of build those coalitions and build an actual movement of the people of this country and right. he immediately started doing the opposite. He immediately started otherizing. He imme- it's like I say it all the time. I feel like people and I'm not saying that this is Cornell West in general. His history speaks to the opposite of this. It is very strange right. to me that he is now doing uh, the, the, something completely different than he's done his entire life, at least to my knowledge. Um, but it, it seems to me like these types of people are more concerned about being able to sit in their safe space feeling smugly superior than they are about actually ever getting anything accomplished. And he wants to preach to the choir and he wants to offer up word salad sermons and he wants to um, uh, you know, only engage with people who already agree with him. And that is a losing strategy. You cannot win unless you are willing to go to people who don't already agree with you and convince them that your ideas are good and that they're better and that they'll work for you. Uh, and he seems completely unwilling to even listen to that type of criticism. And in fact, he bristles and gets defensive um, yeah. and angry. And it's it's so bizarre. That behavior is so bizarre to me. And it's uh, it's completely counterintuitive. It does not work. He is he's he's as far as I'm concerned, his campaign is already over. He's already he's law. He already um, uh, forfeited essentially with that behavior, with that sort of um, perspective and strategy, and then also in hiring Peter Dow. You just killed your own campaign before it even started, homie. It's done. You're done. It's over. And so Kennedy, I think, uh, is at least making an attempt um, to do what is necessary in terms of bringing people together. Now, do I think he's legit? Do I think he's sincere? I don't know. Again, he's a Kennedy. He's a lifelong politician. I don't trust politicians. I have no uh, I have no interest in uh, taking him at his word (laughs) for sure. Uh, But it is definitely, as you said, a much more um, uh, it's a much more intelligent political strategy for sure. There's no question about that. And it is bizarre to me that Cornell West is that's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah, no, it it was really bizarre. It it was really strange to see Cornell West co-authored an essay in the Wall Street Journal defending Ron DeSantis's promotion of classics in education. Yeah. Now, whatever you feel about that, that demonstrates a willingness to step outside of your comfort zone, which is why when he ran, I was like, all right, maybe this could really be something because he usually approaches people with such little judgment. But it was very, very clear that from minute one of that door interview that um, I don't know, maybe it's the greens. Maybe I don't know what it is, but well, I have my it, own was really, about that. it was really a heartbreaker. <laughs> it it, it yes. honestly was. Um, and and so, you know, look, in RFK. I think you see a political versatility um, yeah. that is promising when it comes to just extracting support from the two party system. And look, beyond that, you don't know how everything is going to shake out. But um, at this phase, you, you you just have to be excited that he's doing that, because really what RFK is running on 
And there's a writer, a great friend of our show named uh, Anis Shivani, who I should actually put you in touch with because he'd be a great guest for this show. Although he talks sure. a lot. So you'd have to rein him in because you have ad breaks. <laughs> he could talk for 20 <laughs> minutes at a clip. But he made if a I really can handle Scott point. Horton, I can handle anybody. <laughs> okay. Scott cool. Horton talks a lot. <laughs> then I will, I will pass his info along to you because he'd be a great guest because we originally had him on uh, most recently. We've had him on our show a bunch of times, but we had him on our show to debate RFK, the merits of RFK, because he started out supporting RFK very strongly before he learned of all the uh, you know pro-Israel stuff. And that kind yeah. of was a deal breaker for him, as it was for so many of us. But he made a really good point, and it's a simple point that's sort of hidden in plain sight, which is RFK is really running on American liberalism. Like, he's running to yes. save liberalism um yeah, which i'm also against the excesses <laughs> of capitalism right which yeah. right which i don't exactly buy because i'm not a liberal but like right. he is running like he there's something americana about his message yeah right there's something that appeals to simple you know there's everyday a nostalgia by yeah. Right. Not just a nostalgia for the Kennedys, but a nostalgia for a simpler world where you can like go to work, come home and have enough money in the bank at the end of the month to get the rent or the mortgage paid. Like there's just I, I don't know. There, there There is at the heart of his campaign, I think, a promotion of Americanism. Yeah. Uh, more so than even Trump's uh, than even Trump's message for all his makeup, for all of Trump's nationalism. I would say there's something very quintessentially American about RFK's messaging, which is why he has such broad appeal. Mm -hmm. And it what it, it is what makes him a huge threat. Um yeah. and so it's I get that. look, it's a it's a great day. It's a great day because the what what this look, if he actually follows through on this and actually does this, it it's it becomes virtually impossible for Joe Biden to win. And that's a yeah. victory because the for Democrats sure. have completely betrayed every principle of democracy that they possibly could have. Yeah. Uh, they are an illegitimate political party as far as I yeah. can see. Yeah, and 100%. they deserve this so much. And it is such comeuppance. And it is so fitting that at the end of the day, a Kennedy would be the guy right? who dismantles the Democratic Party. 